Hello and welcome to Infinity. Let's have a look now at uh, some more of the blend ranges. And so I've got this circle uh, uh, selected here and I click on the cogwheel to bring up, bring up the blend ranges control. Let's put that over here so we can see it. Now then what we want to do is, is look at the effect here of the outside things here. In the first video on this we talked at length about how these two graphs work. Now we're going to look around the outside. And what the heck is this thing up here? It's, it's uh, baffled me for ages. This did blend gamma. What the heck does that do? Well, what it's about is if I say bring this down here. So this is the source layer. I'm making the darks more transparent. So this darks at this end and this is transparency. You can see through to the red underneath with the darker end of this circle. But now let's try playing with the blend gamma. And what this does is adjust that a little bit more. It gives it an electric tweak. Look at this. So if I go all the way up to three, then I'm seeing more of the red underneath. And if I'm going all the way down to one, I'm seeing less of that underneath. I can do the reverse of this so that it now is appearing at this end. I also know this is slightly different. See, there's the red coming through there and some red coming through here. And this is part of what gamma is. Um, by and large, if you're using gamma, you, you probably already know what it's for. So, but this is just to show everybody else what the heck this thing does. If I put it across the middle, so everything's 50%. Now let's do one more tweak of this. We go one end, you see it's affecting almost all the, across the whole circle, the higher you go. As you go down there, it's less and less of the circle and tending more towards the darker areas. Gamma normally starts off at 2.2 for pixel areas for text I think it's 1.4 and it's for use by people who probably know what that's for but that's what it does altogether. Right, whilst we're looking at these mysterious things that not very many people use, here's the coverage map and you might have noticed here I've got a letter X in here somewhere. And if I zoom in towards that X here, and bring this up here, this X looks a bit jagged because it's so small, you're down at the pixel level. And as you go into it, you see the different coloured edges there. And that's called anti aliasing, and that is in order to make it look reasonably smooth from a distance. But when you come in here, it's pretty jagged. So if you want to play around with that anti-aliasing, that's what the coverage map does. So if I take the left hand one here and bring this up, you can see it gets darker and darker and darker till eventually at the top it gets the lightest one go completely black. And at the other end, the opposite effect happens is the lighter ones get darker and darker or more and more transparent until they disappear. And so you can have effects. So if I zoom out from this a bit, I say I want to make that a bit more visible, I could turn up that way. But if that's a little bit on the thick side, I could go in the middle and play with that. So it gives you the ability to do it. So I can even do something like a, a step here. And if you don't mind it jagged, at least it's visible. So there we go. That's what the coverage map does. And I was mystified by it for a long time. Let's go on to some of the other things. OK, here's a fairly standard picture you might take. And guess what? The foreground here is rather too dark because I exposed for the sky because otherwise it would be burnt out. So one of the things I might do with this and say, Liz, Liz, and there's several ways to do this, but just, just one. I go to the exposure control and say, let's increase the exposure so the foreground here looks a bit better. So I increase the exposure and the foreground looks better, but the sky has gone completely white. It's burnt out. So now I'm going to use the controls here to see if I can pull it back by make, basically saying, let's make the white things more transparent. And notice as the as I move here, look what's happening down here. See that's moving there. Because what's also going to happen, and we'll look at this in a moment, 
This is kind of OK, but it could be better. So I can put points in here. But if I want finer control, I uncheck the linear. So now I've got a smooth curve. So I've got a smoother control and I can adjust this now. So I'm balancing so I'm getting a better foreground and the, the background's not too bad either. But look at this point that I've got selected here. This tells me exactly where that is. One of the uses for this is if you want to repeatedly do something, you can type these numbers in to set these points exactly where they are. Hitting reset will put us back to where we were in the first place. And there's one reset for each graph. What there is up here as well is I can do this for just a channel. So I can make a particular channel like red. I can make that more transparent. And so that's going to have an effect as well. And, and you can see up here, they're bringing something of the sky back here. So you can have interesting and useful effects with this. Also, when I've got red there, the reset is for that red only. If I go back to the master, I've got to remember that I've been to change the red. Otherwise, I could confuse myself. So there we go. That's all the other things around the edge of the blend ranges control which I tend to use quite a lot. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.